Good morning, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah. Yes, we can okay. hear you well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started with the second CTO session of the morning. Uh, I'll, I'll first like to invite uh, the panelists to join me. Uh, and it's a lot of friends up here. Uh, Gautam Kumar from Atlanta, uh, dear friend Bilal Murad from Minneapolis. Uh, again, another friend Parag Doshi from Chicago, Dr. Ra from Korea, Dr. Harun Babur from Multan, uh, Dr. Ramesh Dagubati from West Virginia, Parvez Miraj uh, from New York, Abdul Hakim from New Jersey, and Dr. Uh, Naeem Tahir Khali from Oklahoma. Uh, if possible, can I ask three of the local CTO operators to join us if they're there? Uh, Dr. Nader, uh, please, Dr. Suhail Aziz, and Dr. Tahir Shafi. Uh, uh, so with this, uh, first talk uh, to be given by Dr. Khaldun Al-Aswad. Uh, he's from Detroit. Uh, he's the senior interventional cardiologist at the Henry Ford Hospital. Uh, and uh, he'll be telling us about the basics of CTO PCI. Uh, okay, do I need to share my, uh, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Here we go. Share. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. All right. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's such an, like a really very fun <laughs> meeting seems to be. And Asad, I like to be where you're sitting. That's a beautiful place where you're sitting. I'm not sure where is that. If that's your home, we're going to have a dinner there sometime. So uh, my, I, I was tasked by the ABC of CTO PCI. And honestly, I'm going to really talk about the ABCs. I know a lot of experts, my, kinda, this is kind of took me back to the early stages when we were still talking about the basics, but I think it's very important to emphasize these basics and I myself go back to them uh, every now and then. So uh, these are my disclosures and pretty much I'm going to talk about things actually Bilal talked about, understanding the anatomy, how to perform an angiogram, what to look for an angiogram, and then uh, procedure setup and how to choose your technique. Basically uh, really simple stuff that, but it's very helpful and I have to keep reminding myself with it. So first of all, how to perform an angiogram for a CTO PCI. On the left here, this is not well, like this is not how to perform it. Like you do not need to panning, no much mag. I can't understand nothing. This is actually the exact same patient. And if you look here on the left, you can, uh, the camera moves really fast and I can't tell. There is a hint of something filling here distally, but I can't tell. If this uh, diagnostic angiogram was a uh, lower mag at a 25 centimeter or 26 centimeter or 10 and a half inches, and no panning, I would have been able to basically probably not have to take a, an initial angiogram or take less angiograms. I would have been able to tell the patient a lot more about how how much like the success rate and what probable the complication rate. On the right here, I have one angiogram, no panning whatsoever, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually staying on the cine until I see the exact distal target. And here I can tell the distal target is actually at a bifurcation. There is no way I can actually do integrated escalation, uh, dissection re-entry, and I keep both branches. It's not easy. I have to do some special technique. So that kind of tells me what to do. And uh, basically no panning. I'd like to show you here this is basically um, the same almost angiogram. This is actually I did both those angiograms and here on the right this is with no panning and I can tell immediately there is a channel here I can see it very clearly and this is actually the channel I used to go back and open that artery because that was the best way I can open it. I couldn't try I couldn't open it integratedly. So that's basically at an angiogram and you have to study the angiogram as Dr. Aziz said you cannot re really kind of jump into the case it's not a STEMI this is a case you has to be no ad hoc it has to be planned you need to basically look at the angiogram over and over if there are old angiogram look at them then when you go to do the the, the CTO PCI itself 
Um, I, I, the most common mistake with the failures I get is actually they did not do dual catheter and geography. This is actually the most common mistake so far I find. And in addition to other mistakes like using six French guide for very heavily calcified artery uh, or um, using EBU 3.5 for an artery that need an EBU 4. So two guide catheters, please do not, do not overlook that, uh, that step. You have to use two guide catheters uh, to, uh, to be able. And how to perform the angiogram when you do two the guide catheter? You start injecting in the donor, uh, in a collateral donor vessel. And once you fill the distal target, you inject. And if you can tell here, this is the same patient. If you look, one single and integrate angiogram, I can tell really very hardly of uh, anything about the distal target. Here, I'm actually 100% sure how long the, the stenosis and what the distal target and what I need to do about it. And then you need to be systematic and you need to be purposeful about how to uh, approach your CTO. So you look this is the hybrid algorithm. Nothing wrong with the Asia Pacific al uh, algorithm. It's actually similar and excellent, good. I don't use CT scan. Like I've done two patient CT scan. I do 200 CTOs a year, probably done two CTs uh, over the last 10 years. So um, I, my local expertise is not that good, but there are people who expert in CT. So uh, the hybrid algorithm, you do this two angiograms like bilateral simultaneous angiography and you look for uh, the proximal cap, you look for the distal target and you look for if there is intervention on collaterals. And what we call intervention on collaterals is a collaterals you can cross. Not intervention on collaterals, Dr. Tuchikani can cross. You can cross, that way you call intervention on collaterals. Ambiguous proximal cap, meaning you don't, if I give you a, a wire, tell you poke the proximal cap, if you know exactly what it is, it's not ambiguous. If you mm, hum, him and han, that means it's ambiguous. Distal target is diffusely diseased and two millimeter vessels, that's poor target. Uh, distal uh, bifurcation of major branch, that's poor target. So you decide according to this answer, no, you go integrate. Yes, you go retrograde. And the length of the occlusion actually will be very good indicative if you're going to need to dissect or not dissect. Even those of us who think they went true to true, most of the time they have some course of the, the wire subintimal space. Most importantly here, these arrows here I'm going to show you, these, sorry, I'm going to go back, these arrows, you have to change the strategy. You cannot get stuck in one strategy. So if you are an operator with, like, you cannot really uh, afford to do Corsair, you can use a fine cross. Or you can use over-the-wire balloon. I would use over-the-wire balloon. I prefer not to, but if this is the only way I can help my patient, I can use over-the-wire balloon. And in fact, we used it before uh, for going retrograde. Um, if you you don't really have to break the bank with wires, I I have every wire known to man, but I only use about seven of them. Like I rarely reach for the other wires. So that's all what you need in your cath lab. So it's very important to change. So then you can. Uh, this is how you decide. You do the angiography. This is the proximal cap. This is this is the cap. This is target and you decide you calculate the JCTO score and JCTO score is very important if you are a beginner and JCTO score is 5 please refer the patient to someone else or wait until the proctor come even the proctor I am as a proctor I do not like to proctor JCTO 5 the reason is you do not learn much from me proctoring you a case really above above your training level if you if you are intermediate, yes, five will be good. But if you're starting, do not book a case for your proctor that actually it's impossible to solve. You need to learn. If we're going to fail with the proctor, it's good to fail. It's not bad failing, but but that's not, you not, you don't, from my, our experience, you don't learn much from really complex cases. And then 
you have to think it's a mindset. Bilal talked about this. It's a mindset. Hybrid CT or PCI approach, PCI approach is a fluid. You have to have all the skills, all the all the ability to kind of switch between integrate, retrograde, integrate the section re-entry according to your local limitation and resources. It's very, very important to be mindful of local resources. And if the patient pain out of pocket, please don't outbreak their, their bank. Sometimes they can increase their MDR and they can live with NG a little bit longer until things are changed. The hybrid philosophy, this is something I like to remind myself with, clinical indication drive decision for PCI. How many times you guys seen a patient, uh, they treated the 70% lesion in the OM and they left the entire chronically occluded RCA and they told the patient go home that basically they treated the not really culprit, culprit lesion because they did what they can do, not what the patient need. So, and if, the, if it's difficult, it's too bad. You send it to someone who can do it. You don't tell the patient medical therapy because it's too difficult. So clinical indication drive decision for PCI. Anatomy when you study the angiogram then you decide which strategy so if your strategy can do if you can do retrograde you do it if you can do adr you do it if you can't you please call bilal wait for him until they come to pakistan or invite him to pakistan and you can do it with bilal or send it to your next door doctor it's very good to it's very good uh, gesture and exit failure mode do not get stuck dr aziz actually alluded to that several times in his talk wonderful talk he said exit failure mode do not get stuck in one strategy so what the difference between CTO and PCI they are tons difference there are a, a lot of difference CTO PCI is not regular PCI you really if even if you good PCI operator you, that mean you have a potential of becoming good CTO PCI but that's not does not mean you're CTO PCI operator because there are a lot of differences not limited to the which guide catheter you use, which sheath you use, uh, how to do the angiography, which kind of wire to use, micro catheter. And I nowadays stage that, as Prague said, nothing wrong with failure. And I don't call, call it failure. I tell my patient I need two shots at it. In the U.S., we can do that. Patient comes back and we do two shots at it. <clears throat> so. Microcatheter usage is very, 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 very important. But you do not have to use a $700 catheter. You can use fine cross. It's okay. I don't like it, but you can use it. I, if I have to, I'll use over-the-wire balloon. But you have to remember that the marker is not at the tip. It helps you tremendously. I'm not going to go over the steps. You guys have my slides. The, the audience can, uh, can, uh, can read them. Wire shaping is very important very very important there is the, here the picture says no you do not shape the CTO wire like this it's one millimeter 45 to 60 degrees this is actually how you do the CTO for several reasons it's safer to do it that way so you have uh, to learn how to do wire. two minutes please yes uh, and then you have to be familiar with uh, intraplaque dissection re-entry. This is a knuckle retrograde. If you see never exited the vessel, this is intra, intra uh, subintimal and plaque. Then you go integrate retrograde. So there is an algorithm for integrate wire escalation. This is a dissection re-entry. You can use it if you have access to the catheter. In Qatar, I was proctoring in Qatar. I had to do everything retrograde when we failed integrate because they did not have it. Can you believe that? The, the most wealthy country in the world didn't have it. They said it's too expensive. And um, these are retrograde. You are option. Use I use SVG. I don't treat SVGs anymore. I normally treat the the, the native vessel, and I use the disease SVG to go retrograde. So basically, uh, some of the technique in a in a in a when you don't have a, a lot of resources, you can actually go back to parallel wire technique. And uh, however, it's inefficient. This is most recent patient I did recently integrate. I couldn't figure out where the plaque. So I actually insisted in going atrium grade. We put a we put an IVIS. We found where is actually the the plaque and look at that look at the LED. That's it. And it's really soft. I use a Gaia next one, crossed it, took a picture, I verified that I am in a true lumen in two orthogonal views. 
then I exchange immediately, you exchange to work horse wire. Do not work over the CTO wires, whatever they are, the pokey wires or the polymer jacketed wire. And we end up solving this patient. This patient traveled 200 miles to see me. In summary, CTO PCI is different. Uh, anti-grade wire escalation is successful in 60 to 70 percent of the time. ADR and retrograde can increase the success rate. CTO or PCI is still complex and unfortunately still higher risk. So you have to be, and we have, I have a, actually a dedicated uh, year of training. I train fellows an eighth year of training. Uh, chip and this is actually Saroj Nopani, uh, my uh, second fellow and now we are on our uh, fourth fellow. If you have any question you can call me or email me I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you so much for a <clears throat> great talk and uh, staying on time in fact you had a few seconds left. A wonderful talk for beginner CTO PCI operators. Thank you again Dr. Laswar. Thank you. Uh, and uh, before we go with the next talk, uh, next talk, I like to. Uh, I think Dr. Jack Tan from Singapore has already joined the panel. Uh, he's the president of the Asia Pacific Society of Interventional Cardiology. Uh, welcome, Dr. Tan. Uh, so the next talk is actually by Dr. Manuel Brelakas. He's also very well known on the CTO circuit. Uh, I understand this is a recorded uh, pr uh, presentation how stoic philosophy can help CTO PCI. I've scrubbed several times with Bilal and I think this is one of the basic skill sets, how to bear the pain and stay on and do the procedure. Uh, so if we can please start the recording. Hi, this is Marsh Berlakis and I would like to thank Dr. Hanif and Dr. Murad for the kind invitation to participate in the Pakistan Live Interventional Cardiology Meeting 2021. I apologize for not being present in person, however, I'm currently in a transatlantic flight. My topic today will be on stoic philosophy, something not very commonly discussed in the setting of CTO-PCI. However, I will try to show you that actually the stoic philosophy have many implications for how to optimally perform CTO intervention. These are my disclosures. And these are some common challenges of CTO PCI. You have been working for several hours on a tough lesion that does not work, so you stop and keep on going. Or you cross the CTO, but then someone just pulled the wire out. Or in this case, you successfully cross the lesion, and at this point the patient has cardiac arrest due to dissection of the donor vessel. This is another example where the patient actually dies during the procedure and now you need to talk to the family. CTO PCI is challenging. It can be difficult to perform. It can take a long time and cause fatigue, both mental and physical. It often results in failure, even in the most experienced hands, and it does have a risk of complications. And there are different ways to respond to the difficulties imposed by CTO PCI, which can be frustration, anger, sadness, but are those the optimal responses? What is the best way to respond to these challenges to make the most of them and be successful? And this is where stoic philosophy comes in. You may recognize this. This is a picture of the Parthenon in the Acropolis of Athens. And directly under Parthenon is the ancient Agora. And somewhere in this part of the ancient Agora, there was a stoa, which is a colonnade, called Pikili Stoa, where the Stoic philosophy started several thousand years ago. This is how a similar colonnade looks like in our days. These were covered spaces that have the uh, pillars on the side, and this is where the Stoic philosophers started teaching and making uh, their approach to life. The beginner of the Stoic philosophy is the Zeno of Sisium or Zenon Kitiefs, 334 BC who said that the goal of life is to live according to virtue and to aim for tranquility, which is the absence of negative emotions, such as grief, anger, and anxiety, and the presence of positive emotions, such as joy. Now, how does CTOPCI have to do with what Zeno said? And these are five key techniques that William Irvine describes in his book, A Guide to the Good Life, 
that directly apply, I believe, to CTO PCI. Number one, negative visualization. Two, the dichotomy or trichotomy of control. Third, fatalism. Fourth, self-denial. And fifth, meditation. And I will discuss them one by one. One key stoic technique is the so-called negative visualization. The problem is that you get used to things going well, things being nice, and that's called hedonic adaptation. You come to expect things will go well as they always have. However, one solution to this is to imagine that we have lost what we value. For example, we're used to being successful in CTO PCI. However, we should not forget that failure and complications are always a possibility, even if things have been going well. This can happen during any stage of the procedure. Before the procedure, by thinking what can go wrong, it helps us prepare for complications and failure and how we're going to respond to these issues. During the procedure, it helps us be on a constant alert. What could go wrong now? Could I have a donor dissection? Could the ACT be low? And this way, we can see or identify problems earlier and correct them early on because, before they become bigger. And then after the procedure, even if things have not gone in the best way, they could always have been worse. This is an example of the various complications of percutaneous coronary intervention, including CTO, PCI. And we should always remember that things can be even worse uh, even, for example, you have a perforation, but the patient survives, it could have been worse because the patient could have died during the procedure. One common criticism of this technique of negative visualization is whether this can make us anxious. But the reason we do it is we don't do it all the time, but periodically. And the point of this exercise is not to actually worry, but to contemplate what could have gone wrong and also not forget that every time we do something, whether this is CTO, PCI or something else, we should never forget that this may be the last time that we actually do this particular action, because you never know when the end is coming. A second key concept of Stoic philosophy is the dichotomy of control. What we control are our thoughts and actions but we do not control everything else. And a key dictum of Stoic philosophy is that it makes no sense to worry about the things that are outside our control. So, for example, in the case of CTO PCI, we control how we approach the lesion, what we think about it, and how we act, but we don't control what the anatomy is, the patient's comorbidities, how other people in the room are going to behave or not. What we control is learning. What we can do is prepare the best for any potential challenge by learning through a variety of media. We control how we understand our equipment, and that's why we prepare by using it consistently and studying the equipment so we can use it in the most effective way. We control what techniques we have mastered, and we can use them effectively in various difficult stages of CTO PCI. We control learning other techniques, such as understanding and reading CCTA that is increasingly being used in CTO intervention, both for planning, especially in uh, complex lesions. We control how we understand and how we internalize the various algorithms. This is an example of Salzen algorithm for the subgroup of balloon and crossable lesions. And uh, having a CTO crossing algorithm that has recently been merged in a global crossing algorithm. We also control our understanding and discussion with the patient about when to perform CTO PCI, which is mainly done to improve symptoms. And finally, we control what we actually do during the procedure. This is an example when we're trying to uh, re-enter uh, in the middle of the right coronary artery, or an example where things go wrong. And what we control is what we actually do. There's a popular book called uh, On Grief and Grieving, that describes five stages of loss, when things go wrong or someone beloved to us dies, or someone has a complication, for example, during CTO PCI. And those stages are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. You first say, this is not possible. Second, you get angry at it. Third, you bargain that, hey, I'll do everything 
to make it go away. Fourth, you get depressed when the reality sinks in and you realize nothing you can do about it, following by acceptance, this is what it is, let's do the best we can under the circumstances. The whole point of Stoic philosophy is to bypass the first four stages and go straight to the fifth stage, which is acceptance. One way to look at setbacks that are very common during city of PCI is to frame them in the right way. For example, when something is difficult or doesn't go well, this can be seen as something unfortunate and bad, or it can be seen as an opportunity to show our skills, or as an opportunity to tell a story in the future about how we responded to this adversity in a positive way. A third technique is the fatalism, which is about the past and the present, but not the future, which is the opposite of negative visualization. Negative visualization is envisioning what could go wrong. Fatalism means something has gone wrong, but we accept it. We don't try to think it could have been otherwise. It is what it is, and we do not believe it could have been better or different. This is an example of a case of a right coronary artery CTO. Um, this is a dual injection doing filling of the distal vessel. The wire uh, here seems to be outside the vessel. Then we end up using the tornus caster that got twisted. It got stuck into the coronary vessel and then we could not get it out. So the patient ended up going to surgery to remove the tornus catheter. And this is obviously something unfortunate, but it is what it is. This is the catheter coming out. And what it teaches us is it happened. Let's see why it happened, which was in part because we removed the wire and rotated the tornus. And now we should never do the same issue again. This is another example of a right coronary artery CTO. This is um, trying to re-enter distally. You see there is uh, some staining. We successfully re-entered. But then uh, once we restore flow, there was uh, this uh, area of staining in the branch of the PDA. The patient, uh, despite uh, uh, placing stents, uh, had the persistence of the staining. We coiled it. But then uh, the patient suddenly went from normal to having ST segment elevation. And then even though we sealed the perforation, the patient had a cardiac arrest and died, likely due to a loculated effusion. So this is what it is. A very bad complication happened. But one way to think about it is use it for the future. It is what it is. It actually happened, the same situation happened again in a case I was proctoring. And having this experience helped me be very proactive, treat the complication very quickly and avoid more complications. The fourth concept of Stoic philosophy is self-denial, which addresses the issue of lacking appreciation. And self-denial means that we voluntarily subject ourselves to discomfort. That makes us to be more resilient and more resistant to difficulties and makes us more appreciate what we currently have. For example, in CTO PCI, sometimes it's going to go long and we're going to be hungry. Well, the point is by depriving us ourselves periodically from food and from going to the toilet breaks, hardens us and makes us be more resilient and able to continue the procedure even in the setting of adversity. It is commonly said that you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable about CTO PCI. And uh, this uh, is done in different ways. For example, using different equipment, treating more complex lesions, asking for help, and sharing the complications, which is uncomfortable, but is a great way to learn. Discipline is a key concept for CTO PCI, as is for life, because balance is the desire with what we want to do and helps us achieve the results. It is critical for being successful in CTO PCI and complex PCI. And finally, the fifth key concept of stoic philosophy relevant to CTO PCI is meditation, which means review of what happened, what was my response, and what could it have been. One way to do this is by writing and publishing our cases and making the most out of what happened in the past. So in summary, the Stoic philosophy is more than 2,000 years old, but these five key concepts can truly help us make the most of CTO PCI and get the best results for our patients. Thank you. Um. I guess that's an interesting uh, talk about TTO PCI, an interesting aspect we never get to hear about. Uh, anyway, um, Dr. Uh, Brilakis did uh, uh, give us a hint about how we can get into trouble uh, during uh, CTO PCI. 
uh, and Dr. Doshi, please uh, take over and tell us how to get us out of trouble. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, Asad, can you see the screen? I can see you, yes. Okay, in the screen? Uh, do you uh, have a... No, I don't have your screen, so please share your screen. You have to share it. Uh, I did. And, uh, okay, one second. Uh, do you have it? Uh, it's coming on, but I, I, I don't see it as yet. Yes, yeah, no. okay, I can see your screen now. Okay, so thanks for being there. You know, we all have been in complications. Um, CT or PCI is always associated with high risk of complications. You have to accept it to start with. What is different? So very first, guides engage both right and left coronary arteries. These are longer cases. There is high degree of calcification. You have multiple catheters and guide wires going back and forth at the same time. Unusual and unnatural pathways are taken by the wires and catheters. You have a very high likelihood of dissection and re-entry with hybrid techniques with an anterior retrograde to so disrupting the tissue planes. And of course, operator experience does matter. What are the major complications? You have hemodynamic alteration and ischemia, including death, collateral or the main vessel perforation. Donor vessel thrombus is a disaster that can be avoided to some extent. Gear entrapment, as Manos Dr. Brelati showed, aortic dissection is another major complication that you have to be thinking of. Uh, you should have for the management proactively a complication card. So some of the things you may need, pericardial synthesis kit should be handy, covered stents should be available in the lab, embolization tools such as pushable or detachable coils. If you don't have that, you can actually take patient's fat and smother it in water and then you can use it. Microspheres, uh, thrombin can be used sometimes for disturbance of, of, of disasters, and I have used it successfully. You need to have retrieval tools such as end snare or micro snares, hemodynamic support devices at the minimum balloon pump, and if you have advanced lab, then Impella or ECMO can sometimes get the patient out of trouble. And of course, vascular access management. If you have a rupture of iliac artery or femoral artery and you need, you need larger balloons, etc. Coronary perforation is one of the commonest and most feared complications. In hospital, mortality rate is about 10% or so. In the open CPO registry that where we participate, participated in the United States, we're about 8.9% uh, rate. Half of these perforations may require treatment. The ones that require treatment, they tend to be larger. They're more likely collaterals, especially epicardial collaterals. They have a high risk shape and less likely to leave a persistent stain. So they fill fast and they drain fast, and that's why they're more dangerous. This is an example of two high risk shapes that we actually put out in a paper based on open city or trial. And two of the most dangerous shapes that we found one we so-called the balloon uh, shape. So when you see this shape, this is many times associated with a higher risk of hematomas and death. And there is also this free floating, the cloud-like, where you know it's going back and forth. Um, how do you manage them? It's not a visual diagnosis alone. You have to look at the hemodynamics. So if you have a little perforation, the hemodynamics are stable, then you may be able to carry out your procedure. But in case you have a dangerous perforation where the patient is dropping the blood pressure, the first step is to inflate a balloon or microcatheter in a distal vessel such that you tamponade the hole. Here's the first step. You call for help. Start calling for the surgeon. See if you have another operator. Get the pericardial synthesis kit open and call for the echo. While you are doing it, uh, and you, in case if you have to do the pericardial synthesis, in the large vessel, you can typically manage with a covered stent. 
the distal vessel, you may have to embolize either with coils, fat, thrombin, or microspheres. You can also use gel form or distal tip of a coronary wire. Now, you can also use tiny pieces of surge sutures. My preference for embolization is either fat or thrombin, and the reason is that it still allows me to go back at a later day to do the intervention. And sometimes if it's a small vessel, which is a branch, you may put a covered stain across the origin of that vessel. This is the algorithm from Dr. Brillaki's book, Manual of Coronary Interventions. I don't want to go into the detail, we've discussed that. The one key thing I would like to emphasize, try not to reverse anticoagulation unless you have to. I think the other management, whether it's pericardial synthesis, you know, covering with a balloon or covered state are more important. Because when you reverse the uh, anticoagulation, many times you end up with thrombotic complications in the guide and you have a situation going from bad to worse. Uh, when you deliver the equipment, try to keep the balloon up as much as possible. Use ping pong guides, but if you have a single guide, keep the balloon inflated and get the second wire right across, around the balloon before you deflate the balloon and again get it up quickly. Sometimes you can use guide extension across that portion to block the perforation. This other complication that I've run many times is hemodynamic alteration in ischemia. What does it happen? You have to recognize. Collateral vessel may be the sole of significant retrograde supply to the CTO vessel. So when you're trying to go retrograde and you block the collateral, now suddenly the RCA CTO now may give you inferior ischemia. These patients many times are sicker. They have a lower ejection fraction. Sometimes we are creating dissection and some creating some intimal hematoma that can compress the distal true lumen. Sometimes you're trying to do retrograde and the left may not have any lesion and then now you put a corset across, it can compromise flow and cause ischemia in the donor vessel. Uh, it's not uncommon at all for transient ST elevation or depression or even hypotension. Many times you can wait for five, ten, or five minutes and it will go away. And other times you have to take appropriate measures. You have to recognize and you have to be patient. Ischemia in the LAV or left main territory may cause you to terminate the procedure or ask for hemodynamic support. Lima is an especially dangerous conduit because it tends to spasm and if patient can go in ventricular fibrillation or cardiac arrest. If you have a severe hemodynamic alteration, you have to change the collateral perhaps. Instead of retrograde, you may have to go integrate back. Sometimes, even if you have a 50, 60% LED, you may end up putting a stent to secure the lumen. So now you can go into collateral and not cause LED ischemia with a core cell or catheter sitting across it. Impella is priceless if it's available and you have to plan it. And the worst case scenario, abort the case, there's always another day. Always, you can plan better. Sometimes you can put the patient on ECMO, but even call for general anesthesia for the reason. Aortic dissection, this is a fear complication. You have a large bore guide catheter that is sitting in a small vessel. You have forceful forward injection, especially in novice hands. Uh, an incomplete coverage of dissection, re-entry area, it can go back, retrograde, especially when your dissection is near the ostium of the RCA or left main. This is an example of a case uh, this is my beginning days. This was a right coronary CTO. It was pretty clear to me that I was going to go retrograde. Uh, this is a retrograde picture. There was a reasonable collateral. Uh, we, uh, this is an example of how we are proceeding. We're, we're able to do reverse start and get a wire externalized. And now I'm stamping and I'm thinking case is over. Now, when you do this second very gentle injection, you can see that there's a slight dye stain. And this is the picture when I'm putting the stain across. And now you can see the localized dissection. These are my early days. I thought that I've done the stain, I've taken care of all of it. But if you look at carefully, the stain has not 
slide toward the ostium. It is just kind of cute, you know, it's exactly at the ostium. And the next picture, my little mistake, I gave it to my technologist. I didn't do it, I didn't do a dental injection. And watch what happens with the next injection. So this is aortic dissection. Is in my hands, what do you do? At that point, you don't pull out anything, stop and think. Do not, absolutely do not take any more pictures with the contrast. Do not pull out your gear. You need that gear in, your guide, catheter, etc., to back up the damage. And you really assess the stain by re-looking uh, re at the picture and also with plain fluoroscopy. You don't need any injection. So after doing this, I recognize that the contrast is contained. It's not extending anymore. So there is a dissection. It's not going any further. It is not expanding, and patient is totally stable. In fact, he was waking up and he was pretty fine. So what do we do? Definitely no more pictures. So I decided that I'm going to put an additional stand, but this time the stand would be totally out into the aorta because I've created a new ostium with an aortic dissection. So I wanted to take it up. I did not use any contrast for that stand. After the stand deployment, I only use intravascular ultrasound to make sure the the right area was open. The fall of CT next day showed minimal staining. In fact, it was better. Patient, we followed for CT for three years. And this was a valuable lesson. That even if you think that your procedure is over, it's not over until your gear is out and patient is back in the polling area. And submittimal space is safe unless you blast it with a forceful injection. Little things matter in CT or PCI. This is an Back example. Two minutes, please. Quickly, this was a retrograde case. No matter how much we did, I tried. Here is where my corset and confianza both got stuck. Blood pressure was in the 50s. All I did was patience, patience. Eventually, we were able to take it out. I left a piece of wire. Again, I tried. Again, I was able to set another centimeter of wire stuck, and I was able to get everything out. Left the case. The patient was alive uh, another day. Uh, another complication is donor vessel thrombus. You have to keep the ACT about 350. Make sure you take your technologist and the staff to remind you. Uh, this is a last summary slide of the complication that you can uh, consider. Aortic dissection, vessel perforation, gear entrapment, collateral perforation, ischemia because of the donor vessel compromise, and of course, thrombus and dissection. Conclusion, complications are common. Operators must be familiar with potential complications and management strategies. You must follow your learning curve. You don't start with JCP of my file. And humility is better than arrogance for the patient. A patient alive can come back. Make sure you give up if you need to. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Parag, for a wonderful talk. Uh, I think this is very important for all levels of CT operators, how to get out of trouble, uh, and more importantly, how not to get into trouble. Uh, Bashir, do we have time for questions and answers, or uh, are we going on to the live case? Let's quickly do uh, some comments from the panelists, uh, and then we can move on to case. Maybe a couple of minutes, just two minutes. Okay, uh, Bilal. Uh, uh, hey, how are you, Bilal? I'm doing well. It's been a yeah, while. Waiting for you in Karachi. Anyway. Uh, do you have any tips and tricks uh, how not to get into trouble and uh, for you know beginner CTO operators? You know, one of the things that I uh, have been doing more consistently is that before the procedure is done, I study the coronary angiogram with the staff who's going to be in the room with me, who are going to be scrubbing in my techs and my nurses, and we talk about the potential for complications that can occur and what are the steps that we're going to take if those were to occur. So if I feel that this is a uh, higher risk for a coronary perforation, which is always the case, obviously, making sure that we have that equipment or other unique complications, that way you yourself are not surprised by it, your staff are not surprised by it, uh, 
you don't want to you don't want to see it. But at least when it occurs, the um, the as as Manoj very beautifully said, you know, keeping that emotion under check in that room really comes with anticipation of the problems and 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 dealing with the complications. It's when we don't think about things and and and, and get surprised by it is when I think we get into more trouble. So we know this is going to cause complications. We know uh, uh, how to treat it. So let's plan ahead of time and get the whole room prepared. And I think that I, I find myself uh, that I deal with it a lot better when I am uh, my whole room is aware of what's going to happen. And then if it does occur, by the way, one of the key things to do is to debrief your team and sit down with them and go through it and explain to them what exactly happened and what could have been done better and what we did do well. Because, you know, emotionally it brings people down when they see a bad outcome. And I think it's important to celebrate the good outcomes, but also to learn from the uh, complications so that they feel that what they do is really genuinely worthwhile. Any good questions from the audience? Any questions? So, no questions here. Shri, okay. so Shri, just, can I, this is Nain Tahir Shali, yes, can Nain. I uh, yes, So, yes, I just listened to all the experts very carefully. Um, and I come to Pakistan almost every year, every six months, and I operate there in several different cat labs. So my, uh, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here, but, but what I want to have the fellows or the um, 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 operators that are, uh, that are new, just be aware that this is a very frustrating field to be part with. And, and there, will, there are many nights that you go back home and, and you say, why did you do this in the first place? And all the panel folks that are here would, would agree with me that there's, you know, you can always do a 70, 80% of uh, LED stenosis in five minutes. In, in the institution that I am at the Oklahoma Heart Hospital, we have 50 interventional cardiologists that work with us. And maybe two or three of us work with CTOs because the rest of the ones um, think that we're stupid people that we're doing this, because it's just not worth it. Um, there's a lot of complications that do occur, and, and what you see in, in the studies that are reported are with the operators that are the best of the best operators, um, the Al-Swads of the world, the Manu Burlakas of the world, the Lombardis of the world. Um, when, when average people work, there's a lot more complications, and so when you get into this, know what cover stent you have, which guide it will go into, what is the ID, have you ever put a coil in yourself, do you even know what thrombin injection is, what a fat injection is, these are the things that you will have and when you have these, you will, you will potentially kill those patients. Um, and also make sure that you're symptomatic patients because there are a lot of patients when you tell them you got one artery blocked up and they don't have significant symptoms, they don't have a very positive stress test and they get Record into getting a CTO um, operator on because it's an operator who thinks he can do it. Um, and then if that patient passes away, it's it's a hard time to sleep in and remember they are somebody's spouse or father or mother too. So um, I, I just you saw Manu's uh, slides, you um, 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 saw Dr. Doshi's slides, and those are things that each one of us who have done CTOs. Have, have had to talk to the families and go over. Um, a lot of times we come out, but what the CTO operators are starting to do is actually freely share their complications with each other. Um, long time ago when we used to go to ACC, we would see complications and then the doctor would show how they saved the patient and they would never show the complications where they actually killed the patient or the patients died. And as you saw, Manu actually showed some patients like this. So um, just reminding that, I. So some of the cath labs that I've worked in Pakistan, they don't even have an ACT in the room. And so just have to remember what you have before you attempt some of these things. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Naeem. Just quick questions from the audience. One question and then we have to move on to the live case. They are ready over there. Go ahead, sir, please. Uh, sir, my question is uh, when you try a CTO and you have selected a wire, uh, it, with the passage of time, the wire start telling you it's not my job and you should try some other wire. What some operators do, they, they take a balloon support. My question is, how often do you people try this? And is there any precautionary measures or anything you should consider it or do, you should not consider it? Uh, what is your experience about the, taking a balloon support on a wire? Uh, 
Anyone want to respond to that? Uh, Jack, uh, did you understand the question? Can you… Uh, I mean, uh, I, I sort of like understand it, uh, saying that uh, how do you use balloon support? So I will say that uh, if you want to do CTO, micro catheter is preferred. I think the minimum balloon support is over the wire balloon. Because what you want to do is the ease of not pulling out and uh, escalating the wire to where you're getting at. So I would think balloon support is the minimum uh, with a comfortable wire that you have. But in general, micro catheters. Uh, if you may, I just make some um, quick comments about the three fantastic talks that I heard. One, just some tips and tricks. Uh, I always aspirate some blood before I give heparin because you don't get thrombus after you anticoagulate them. Uh, two, the talk about the post bypass, you do get a minor perforation. Beware of the perforation wire in the CERC and RCA territory because uh, I've seen cases where it's a compression of coronary sinus at those locations post bypass when the pericardium is closed. Um, the other thing is a crash cart. So if you want to do this, please have this ready crash cart where all the devices are there, you just push in, it's there. You don't scramble for it, you're not uh, too anxious. Uh, the summation of it is a, a difficult balance, the success mindset, going in with the contralateral injection, the large guide, and aiming for success, but I really like Khartoum's uh, guidance about doing it state. So success mindset, balance with humility to say that I'm stopping here, I'm not going to cause harm, I'm going to bring the patient back for another successful procedure rather than pushing it to the hilt and then killing the patient. The last bit I found as a fellow when I was younger starting off, I benefited greatly not trying to do it myself, but I was second assistant to multiple experts within my center to do it. And that really helped me a lot uh, in that journey uh, for myself. So I think be ready to even just assist the more senior operators in doing the case. Uh, that, that was a wonderful experience for me. So um, uh, thanks a lot okay. for the chance. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. I think Asit, they are ready for the case. So we are going to switch on to the case and uh, then you can take over, please. Thank you. Okay, I think till we start hearing from them, if anyone has uh, any other comments, uh, Gautam, you want to say anything uh, on the talk so far or any uh, tips or tricks? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, while we have a second, uh, feel free to cut me off anytime uh, we go live. Um, I think one of the most important uh, things that I earned, learned uh, pretty early on, especially if you're having a perforation, is to really have a second guide catheter system to quickly come on up while you're holding tamponade with one system uh, and uh, really come up with a second system uh, that can be used to advance your covered stents or coils. And it's also important to remember the size um, that your covered stent is going to go through. Uh, it's going to be hard to get an uh, uh, old generation graph master uh, without a seven French. But on the other hand, the newer papyrus stents can probably go through a six French. So th those are important things to remember based on what you actually have in terms of covered stents. Thank you. And uh, while that's happening, you. maintaining balloon tamponade is important. Sorry, I guess we're live. No, no, that's okay. We are trying to see if they... I think the summary for the complication uh, is good and the, the basic the summary for the CTO-PCI, I enjoyed the lecture, mm, good comments for the discussion. Mm, it's good for to establish uh, the basic uh, to complication prevention and management, but uh, continuous update and the uh, uh, community activity is also very important. We uh, have a Korean CTO club and we have a complication club and related com uh, the activities, the regular based meeting. So uh, we try to invite uh, all the, uh, the specialty group, the case competition and the invitation and the invited uh, lecture and uh, some kind of this kind of regular based uh, uh, active scientific meetings uh, we are actively sharing uh, uh, this preventing complication and management thank you we are okay. we have published <laughs> complication management okay. related CTO. 
Thank you very much. I think we may have Cath Lab on. Uh, can you hear us well? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, can Dr. Mayer please explain oh. the case and then we can show you what's going on. Uh, so, Asad, you can take, take, take it over. Asad, you, you can moderate the case, please. Yes, Walikun Islam. Go ahead, we can hear you. We are, yes, we are live from OMI Cath Lab and I welcome you all on the behalf of Dr. Nadeem Asad Rizvi, Director yeah, of Cath Lab, OMI. Uh, let me introduce yes, with my team, uh, we have Dr. Suhail Aziz along with uh, uh, Dr. Mohammed Nadir Khan and Dr. Naeem Mangal from NICVD. I would like to introduce my team as well. Uh, we have on panel uh, Mr. Yes. Nabeel along with our uh, nurse Sabah and Meher. So, uh, so the, this patient had this patient is basically a 53 year old Say gentleman, and, and he has been presented some uh, hospital uh, in India since where, uh, where he was diagnosed as inferior wall, inferior wall MI. And during the procedure, uh, they found they the patient was three vessel disease, so, just, so they just over to the RCA and left the patient for the heart team discussion and heart team advice cabbage but the patient was reluctant for the cabbage so we are here for the patient uh, dr Adil, over, over to you yeah. this is the uh, uh, can you show us the angiogram the baseline angiograms please uh, okay uh where will we play the baseline angiogram Baseline angiogram is the, oh, oh, the The images you took today would be fine. Uh. Uh, uh, Swell, jo aaj ke aapne basic shots. If you can just show us those, that would be great. Yeah, you can, we'll just show, can we show the first angiogram? Uh, so let's show them the initial procedure also, if you can. Uh, the story is that this person had a uh, patient had a uh, uh, acute inferior MI. And uh, so they did a balloon angioplasty to the right coronary artery because they had taken pictures and saw CT on the left side. Uh, and so when they did the right, they ballooned it and they left it alone. And uh, so now they came back and took some more pictures and we'll show you the procedure of today's uh, first. Uh, can you show what happened this morning? So this morning, uh, next please. Uh, so we're not seeing the angiogram. Um, okay. So next. Uh, uh, we, we're not seeing any angiogram images. Uh, oh, can you put it in the main screen, please, uh, to audiovisual? No, no, uh, the, the angiogram image, can we have it on the main? Okay, this that's an, better. So this is the angiogram of this patient. You can see here the CTO LED and uh, the C, uh, moderate to severe disease in OM. Uh, next, please. So you can... Next. So next, please. Now show the RCA. So this was the so RCA. Up, both days, Jare. Please go slow. Please show the RCA. Yeah. I Where think someone RCA? should sit outside with the um, the team who is operating the camera and everything to tell them where to put which one because they keep changing. Yeah, we keep seeing the the still frame from the current guide. Can you put the main angi angiogram on the main central screen, please? Uh, can you do, do that? Can you show this? The, can you just replay or anything? main pe kar den. You center me still frame ke bajaye wo kar den, please. Uh, central screen kyun nahi aari yaar? Ye uh, uh, Swell, I guess you took dual injections. Why don't we start from that? Agar if you can just show us the baseline dual injection. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. No, okay, so uh, they fixed the right first, and now we are here to look at the CTO LED. And so, can we show them pictures of the CTO LED, please? This is the Kauji. Okay, uh, next, please. Go go forward. Go forward. Uh, 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 Swell, they're showing it on the side image. It's very small, and we can't see it. Can they put it in the main central screen, please? Can you follow? Can you show the main screen now? Where will we show the replay? Okay. Uh, can you go forward, please? Can you go forward, please? Uh, forward. Uh, so, so that's the left-sided. Next, please. You can see the critical lesion in the OM, and there's a, a, a 
large sort of slightly tapering and this uh, mid led you can see a little bit of cross filling uh, late filling from ipsilateral side uh, there's a medium sized diagonal there uh, you can see a bifurcating led distally next please uh, that's a spider view. There's a moderate region at the ostium of the LED, and then there's a little stump, pretty big stump. Uh, the circ is medium size, appears to be disease free. Next, please, apart from that OM lesion. Next, please. Next, please. So that's the RCA, and next, please. It's a huge size. Next, please. This had a POBA a couple of months ago. Uh, there's a critical lesion uh, distally in the uh, RCA, so they decided to fix it in the morning before we came. That is a great job done. Can you go forward, please? Can you go forward, please? So they're ballooning it. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. So there, there's a stent there, which is a 426 and 415. Next, please. And the second stent going next, please. Next, please. And, and they end seed with a 4.5. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. And next, please. And, and that's, the, that's a very wonderful result. Uh, and so next, please. Now we come to the left side. There are all the wonderful pictures. Great vessel. You can see some cross-filling from this side. Next, please. And so we... Went on to now we're going to talk about the, the CTO LED next, please. Okay, so we did a dual injection. You can see late fill and anti grade, and there's a long gap, there's a calcification, there's a, some hint of a stump there. Uh, so, how would you talk uh, deal with this now? There's a moderate lesion proximally, and then there's a total edge branch, there's a side branch at this stenosis, uh, there's a little stump there. And there's a long segment, more than 20, which is not a good thing. There's, there's calcium. So it's going to be challenging CTO or for which you have to be totally ready for this. So how did you go about it? Uh, what are uh, Swail, can we just get some opinion from the panel? Can you give us a couple of minutes? Uh, Dr. Alas Aswad, how would you approach this? Uh, 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 are, are you uh, happy with the information you have? And what would be, how would you read this? Yes, absolutely. So this patient came with a STEMI, so he deserved a called complete trial, deserved complete revascularization, and they done uh, a great job. This is this is exactly the setup I would start with. So basically, I'm looking at proximal cap. I think I know what is a proximal cap. So this is not ambiguous proximal cap. There are. Uh, the occlusion length uh, probably more than 20 millimeter. I can see some reconstitution in the middle of the segment. Probably it's probably it could be full. It could be shorter. Uh, the diagonal, uh, if not, the distal cap is at a probably three millimeter before the bifurcation of a m important diagonal. And there are both ipsilateral and contralateral collaterals, including septal collaterals coming from the PDA. So there are multiple, multiple options how you uh, uh, approach this. Obviously, they cross the integrated wire escalation. So I will take a microcatheter over the wire balloon or microcatheter. I get to the proximal cap. Uh, if a microcatheter, I put the microcatheter right, right by the proximal cap. If the workhorse wire within cross, I will still try the workhorse wire. I will go integrate wire escalation. Wire escalation with starting with uh, probably starting with a polymer jacketed wire taper tip uh, XT and go back up to pilot 200. If the, I would not penetrate the proximal cap, I will puncture the proximal cap with um, uh, penetration wire, Gaia, or, uh, and then de-escalate. So escalate and de-escalate. Once you penetrate, you de-escalate unless you know exactly where the wire goes and you can try to navigate it. Uh. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Tyrefully, how would, how would you do it in your lab? So uh, this, is, this is an excellent job. The, the only what? thing I would say is that the uh, proximal cap is uh, fairly, fairly what? obvious. 1.5. And, uh, and then there's a little suggestion this is that this is not a very old chronic one, and it's probably a, a more recent occlusion. Um, 
And then the right to left collaterals are not as much. You can see more ipsilateral collaterals. So hopefully, even though the length of the occlusion looks like it's long, the true occlusion, as Dr. Al Sawadi mentioned, is probably shorter. Um, and, and obviously, it's now we can see that he's crossed it. But even before, we would have said that um, we may not have to go into a penetrating wire like Confianza or a Gaia 3 or something. And um, you should be able to penetrate that uh, even with Pilot 200 and stuff. And um, I see that they've actually gone into the diagonal also, which they have protected. So. Um, uh, it looks like an excellent uh, work. Thank you. Dr. Tan, uh, would the Asian approach be any different from the U.S. approach? Uh, uh, okay, so what we did after the... Uh, Swell, Swell um, can, you, can you wait for a second, please? Just getting some comments from the panelists. Sure. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that. Uh, the Asian approach generally doesn't like a re-entry approach, but this case is a wonderful case for just uh, an integrated great approach. I think it will be, I, uh, all the comments are great. Microcatheter lead into the stump. You may Can want you... to test with a uh, workhorse, uh, maybe a bit more hydrophobic wire that, like the XT, A or R, and it doesn't go through or just go straight with a Gaia 2, should cross uh, in that case, uh, and at best escalate to parallel wire. But uh, less need for either retrograde or re-entry techniques, I think, in this case. <clears throat> Okay, great. Uh, Suhail, can you tell us uh, how did you start? W w what was your approach? What guides do you have? What access? Yeah, okay. So what, what it did was... Uh, uh, we're not going to stop because we have battle against ACT. We don't want uh, to talk, talk too much. No, down, please. So what we did was uh, we've got a guiders on both sides. The 7 French is uh, an XB 3.5 and we had a sheetless radial entry. Can you go plus, please? Next, please. Go next, 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 next. next. Come to the. Uh, 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 okay. okay, next, please. Cut to next, next. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Next, 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 Okay, easy, go easy. Got it. Okay, so when we, the team was really great. They did a great job. They put all these guiders in for us. They have a 7 French X50 on the left side and uh, the four uh, Judkins right guider on the right side. But uh, they have uh, one radial axis, one femoral axis. So the 7 French is the real state for us. Your voice is not coming clear, Swale. We can't hear you. Can you? Can you hear me now? Uh, that's you... better. That's, uh, okay. that's correct. So, uh, because the uh, the the guider uh, the uh, uh, XP3, which was the main anti uh, approach for us, was in the femoral, much away from me, and there was this bracket for the radial between me and and the the guider. I had to really reach across. So, it's very important that in long procedure you should be comfortable. So, we had to exchange and bring the guider towards us. So, for that we did a sheetless entry. Uh, can you go minus on this, please? Swell, okay, okay, so. Swell, why is seven French? Yeah. Why is seven French? Uh, well, because it's going to be a CTO. We'd have to do trapping. We'd have to do exchanges. We'd have other supports. We'd, we might end up with a bifurcation because there's a little, uh, uh, there's a bifurcating legion beyond the LED. So, we have to be ready for a bifurcation. We need a lot of equipment going in there. So, I feel much more comfortable with the seven French. Um, I, I don't think, I, I think if I was a real uh, serious, I thought if this was a tricky case, I'd have a 7 French on the right also. So without this, I would not approach my, my CTO. When I start my CTO, I want my fellows to do everything precisely. You should not like try and outthink an, uh, a CTO. If you want to do a serious CTO, it, everything has to be the same every time. So by the time you come in, this takes about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, your fellows should put same French guiders on the left and right side with good supports. Uh, you know, it's very important. Uh, and there are different ways of getting support. Uh, for the left, it's not a problem. You can just take an XP, it will support anything. For the right, it can become a problem. You can talk about uh, an implant, you can talk about anchoring or whatever. So anyway, so we exchange. Next, please. Uh, so there's some more pictures. Next, please. Uh, yeah, so we're exchanging now. 
नेक्स्ट प्लीज नेक्स्ट प्लीज वो आपने वो नहीं दिखाया बेटा वो जो मैंने रिकॉर्ड ओके वी एक्चुअली वो शोड हाउ द ब्लू एंट्री वॉज बींग रिकॉर्डेड बट देर इन सेव इट सो नाउ वी एक्सचेंज द कैथेटर लेफ्ट कैथेटर पीछे करो है पीछे करो बैक प्लीज पीछे करो नहीं आपने नहीं दिखाया ना माइनस करो एक माइनस हाँ नहीं आपने नहीं रिकॉर्ड किया ना बेटा जब मैं रिकॉर्ड करूं तो रिकॉर्ड करना है अच्छा ये काम सोने वाला नहीं है एवरी आईज एवरी एयर शुड बी ऑन मी मैं मुझे ऊंचा ना बोलना पड़े ठीक है ना सो यू मस्ट ऑल बी वेरी क्वाइट लुकिंग एट मी ऑल द टाइम इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट टीम शुड बी टोटली अटेंटिव टू यू एंड फोकस्ड एंड नो बडी शुड बी डिस्ट्रेक्टेड बाई एनी थिंग सो नेक्स्ट प्लीज Next please. Next please. So once we got the equipment in there, we took another picture. Next please. And and so okay. So now what we did was uh, we have a micro sitting right at the ostium of that tapered stump. Which and micro catheter? So which is this one? This is a this is the fine cross, and uh, that seems a very uh, wonderful catheter. So we thought that we're going to start feeling with this with a. to uh, pilot 200 i think anything less would probably have been much uh, uh, you know with the, or so much calcium there uh, yes. it won't question of like just finding a way around i need a little push so then we started fiddling around with a um, uh, fire pilot 200 next please so well can we just uh, stop for a second i would like to uh, ask the panelists what would be their first uh, wire choice in this case we have uh, dr mahboob alam from baylor uh, mahboob uh, what would you uh, be choosing uh, what kind of wire in this case would be your first choice uh, as a starting wire uh so in uh, can you hear me yeah we can hear yes, you yes i can uh, so you know um, most of the time as uh, said before this is a very calcified cap and uh, you need more support but i usually start with my workhorse wire uh usually um and uh, if i have a problem the escalation is usually a pilot or a fielder xt <coughs> i'm more a fan of a pilot over fielder xt because uh, i've seen fielder xt sub a lot of times go sub into mo um but uh the uh, pilot would be a good wire here and i think the the that's what they use and um, gotham what would be your first wire in this case um after with the micro catheter in that position i probably would go with the gaia second in this scenario uh if that is available there dr ra hello yeah uh, because there is a this this case we have to concern for the saving branches from t1 t2 t3 and that because of the there's a uh, moderate severe disease in the proximal rd uh, to minimizing flow limitation the proximal disease i would uh, prefer slender micro catheter fine cross is one of option uh, i would prefer carabel if the uh, okay. okay. then would choose okay. the a first then you feel the skin a fail to cross and i i would uh, try the directional more uh, Control, control wire directly uh, escalation by a second. That is my usual practice. And then fail, then we can do the the very very nice uh, retrieval collateral from the PLB to epicardia from okay. PLB to the distal RAD. Thank you, Prag. Uh, what will be your choice? Check this. Check this. In this case, I think. Uh, I do agree with one of the opinions that I would want to go whether this is a relatively distant CTO. So I would actually, once I have gotten my micro catheter in place, I would actually probably do XTA, which has been usually my wire to start probing. And of course, you know, then I would decide based on how it progresses whether I continue with that or go with the guy of series. Okay. Okay. So I'll go ahead, please. Sorry. Well, um, Vishy, you... my thought. Yeah, is, sure. Is Go ahead. His name is Doctor Doshi's. Yeah. If you looked at the initial pictures, you could see some dye hanging out there in the proximal cap. And uh, I, I think it's more of a recent CTO, and and um, with a with a fine cross there, or turnpike, or or corsair there, um, a regular polymer jacketed wire should go through. 
I've gone to using Mongo a lot more instead of the pilot. I find it it's a little heavier and, and works a little bit better and we can form the knuckle pretty easier. Nitro, please. People, yeah. nitro, nitro. How much is it? And magnesium is fine. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> Well, can you tell us how did you make progress with the Pilot 200? Huh? So, uh, can I say that, please? I need R glasses, I don't need lower lock there. Swell, can you hear us? Okay, so, yes, I can. So, uh, okay, tell so us what did you do and also, once you have crossed and you are sure that wire is distal, do you still need the right uh, guide or catheter over there? Okay, so what we did was we took a, the micro and we uh, got there with a run through wire, work yeah. wire, just so that micro we don't traumatize the proximal vessel. Then we had the tip of the micro right at the ostium at the, of the stump. And then we thought that we were going to start fiddling with the 200. Uh, I didn't Swail, can they put, Swail, just one second. We can't yeah. see the images. Can they put it in the center screen? Yeah. Uh, uh, can you, can you, can you, are you also, seeing me right now? Also, can I request the panelists to mute themselves uh, if they are not speaking? Thank you. Tell me which screen is going to be. Can you guess? Okay, now we can see it now in the center. Thank you. So, you can, you, you can see that I'm just like doing 180 turns with a pilot 200 and it yes. seems and next please. And we uh, gave a right injection. Next please. And just see, I think we're approaching it quite well. It seems to be quite well lined. The wire is making good progress. We progress some more. Next please. Okay. And so you can see we made some progress. Next please. We took another injection. Next, please. Yeah, keep keep going. Yeah, you can see uh, that we're uh, across the lesion, and but we're into a side branch. Next, please. And we redirected that, pulled it back, and uh, we seem to have gone into the main vessel. And once we got in the main vessel, I think the bulk of the work was behind us. Uh, we then tried to push the micro down. It wouldn't go in. Next, please. We have pushed hard. Next, please. Uh, it just won't go because a lot of calcium there. Next, please. I think the distal end of the wire over there seemed to be maybe entered in the small side branch or uh, I don't know, dissection. That's a side branch, but that's not a bother. I want to get my micro down and then make all the progress. I don't want to fiddle around this mid vessel with the 200. Now, what we've done is we've got a balloon in the side branch and we're anchoring it. Next, please. And you can see that uh, the guider. The, the micro goes goes down quite well. Next, please. And then we just test the micro. And next, please. What we're doing now is next, please. So we're gonna we're gonna take the micro out. Uh, we're gonna trap it in the guider. We pull it back. We inflate a balloon just at the close to the ostium Did so that the wire gets the wire? Uh, Sorry. Did yeah, you so what we did was. Which wire? We took, the, we took the 200 out and we pushed in, uh, exchanged it for a run-through wire. And with the run-through, we advanced all the way to the tip. It, it, we didn't want to advance to the tip with the 200. And then we are taking the micro out. We trapped it uh, uh, in the guider and then we, uh, the, the run-through and we pulled the micro out. And next, please. And now we, it's at 1.5. Um, the mini track, and uh, it's not going far, so we're inflating it where it is. There's some calcium there. Next, please. And we're inflating a little more. Next, please. And what what balloon did you use for trapping in the 7 French guide? It was 2.5, 15, uh, 2.5, 15 micro, uh, mini track. Any particular and advantage of this trapping balloon which is out there over there? Uh, my, no. well, the trapping is that you either you have to blow the micro off because it's uh, uh, over the wire system, you can't just pull it out. If you pull it out, you're going to pull the wire out. So you have to make sure that the wire stays in its place. What you do is you pull the micro back into the guider 
and you take a balloon beyond it, you inflate it in the distal part, uh, just short of the ostium, inflate it, and so the wire gets trapped. So when you pull the micro, the wire doesn't come back. Or you can so use also dog you can wire. Or do, yeah. dog wire. Mm -hmm. Sorry? I'm saying you can also use a dog wire that Right, like if you have to use additional, if you, you, you can use no, the same balloon wire, later, that's dock, fine, dock. but otherwise the dock wire may be a little cheaper. Yeah, the, we just use the same balloon we use for uh, sheetless entry. This is going to be the same equipment you are using over and over again. And it's just quicker uh, docking with, with, you know, uh, yeah, it, it's more reliable. And anyway, so now we inflated with a 2.5 uh, balloon, some little uh, now we took a 2.5. Next, please. Next, please. And and uh, you know, can see the distal vessel. Next, please. Next, please. Next. Next. This is a 2.15, 2.515. Next, please. And uh, we've given some nitro. So we will take now. You are with us right now. And now we're going to see uh, what happened. Can you see through the I'll check, please. Well, do you need to keep that right uh, catheter in the RCA because once you have crossed and you're sure, I usually remove it. Yeah, I need to say a little more. What I'll do now is, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do now, there's a big side branch. Uh, uh, sorry? What is okay, Can I have another uh, run through, please? Yes. Uh, the shape and so there's a big side branch and I'm gonna try and uh, uh, get my wire down there and then I'm gonna inflate across it and see what kind of strategy you want to have for this um, just a, a, a real quick comment while uh, is, uh, 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 so I like the fact that there is such a nice uh, knuckle at the end of the LED wire, which is great, but it's also gone a long way, and because it's a big LED, and just for, for the beginners, it's really important, and for the experienced people too, you know, with all the manipulation that we do with the guide and balloon uh, withdrawal and advancing, sometimes we are so focused on the disease segment that we forget to look at the tip of the wire, and you don't want to be in a situation where you have a successful... Okay, uh, spider we all need to be followed by a distal wire perforation. Just um, uh, during the procedure. So, well, I don't know. Okay, so the picture now, you showed, uh, we are not really clear how much disease is in that area or how much that diagonal is disease itself. Um, if you could take a better picture to show the LED and diagonal and to see if you really need to put, if there is not much disease there or the diagonal is disease free. What I'm saying is that we are not uh, seeing that uh, LED diagonal uh, bifurcation that well, so I'm not sure how much disease is there in the diagonal ostium or LED to really see if you need another wire there or not. Now, we, now we're going to go live where we are right now. Um, we now uh, live to get the wire into the side branch. Live we'll, we'll make the, the current live screen the, what you're going to see. You're just seeing the, the side screen. So now we'll try and show you the main screen. Bashir, how much time do we have for the live transmission? Uh, another five minutes. I, I, I just want, want to make this comment for everybody in the audience, especially those who are trying to start a CTO PCI program. You have to remember the distal bed in the after a CTO is a lot of time there is negative remodeling so you do not really have to do a lot of things in the distal bed don't keep chasing it down a lot of times if you come back three months later there will be 30 percent uh, positive remodeling the vessel will plump up uh, this is a situation where I give a lot of nitroglycerin nicardipine whatever you use in your cath lab and they take an angiogram and uh, we tend to use 90% of the time uh, we tend to use IVIS and 100% of the CTO we use IVIS so we always kind of uh, do IVIS to kind of decide what the distal bed looks like and the side of branches if they need to protect it or not. So amongst uh, CTO operators in Pakistan what is the uh, average uh, intravascular uh, imaging rate? Uh, 
I would say in the U.S. Cal, you probably would say it's close to you know 80, 90 percent. But uh, what would be the imaging rate? I, I don't know. In the, in the, in the, in the U.S., the C2 operators so far embraced uh, uh, intravascular imaging really good. The average in Michigan, I know, average uh, is 18 percent. In our hospitals, 89 percent. That include everything. Um, but um, I don't know. Uh, I think Gotham in Pakistan for CTO procedures is probably barely above zero, so I think. Uh, so just to follow up on uh, Dr. Al Sawadi's uh, uh, thought process, so um, we have done IVSs, and even in the digital one, all 100% of our CTOs, we do IVS or OCP. And um, um, we've gone back in three to six months to relook at them, and the stent uh, at that point um, is underdeployed because what has happened is uh, uh, positive remodeling has occurred, and the stent that we thought was the right size at the time is not yeah. at, that, at that point. So we've actually redilated. Uh, Name, can you speak a little loudly? So I was just following up on uh, Dr. Al Sawadi's point that because of the slow, the, uh, no flow being going through there, the distal bed is usually smaller than what it would be in three to six months. And even the actual lesion, the stent that we put in and check with OCT and IVUS, sometimes when we go back three to six months is, is smaller and we have to redilate um, the stent uh, to upsize it to the, the newly positively remodeled uh, artery. Um, so it really it is, it, it be, like I said earlier, CTO is a very, very expensive um, um, yeah. process, and you have to have all these tools to be able to do it efficiently. And IVUS would be a, a critical point uh, in that, uh, as far as uh, uh, we would think so. I don't know if uh, Hakim Abdul Hakim is there uh, on the uh, Zoom. Parvez Miraj or Ramesh. No, they're not there. Okay. Uh, Dr. Fine. Suhail, can you hear us? Uh, so oh, we've got the uh, wire across these techniques. We've got a balloon. Uh, we balloon the CTO. There's a lot of calcium. And this is what we've got right now. Let's have. So, just a couple of things. Uh, do you really need that RCA guide and also the third wire in that upper diag? Uh, probably we can take those out. Like, upper diag looks small. Like, the more equipment yeah, you have. Is going to just increase the chance of thrombus. He was of curling. Say, licking. Okay, so that's what we have right now. We open the CTO. We have a keep running it, please. We have a small diagonal uh, uh, proximal to that lesion, and now across it, we've got a very big uh, diag. How do you think we should go about? Should we just uh, do a provisional hair balloon that ostium a little, and then? Sent across it, or do you need us to bifurcate? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, Asad, we can have quick comments, uh, one or two comments from the panelists, and then we'll have to wrap it up, uh, move on to the next session because they will be ready uh, in Turkey for the live case also. I, I'm, I'm worried this is a, a wire bias, it's not a real lesion in the osteals D2. So uh, it, it, it's, if it's only wire bias, you can just stint across it if you need to and, and leave the wire there, gel the wire. But the way to buy, figure that out, you have to pull to the uh, soft tips. Um, it might be not a wire bias, but if it's, if it, if it's a real lesion, I will uh, dilate it with a two millimeter balloon. So you don't want to do a, a two stent technique, you just want to uh, so relieve the spasm with a little ballooning and then spent just one cent across both of the dye. The, the CT, CTO PCI is an expensive proposition. I normally try not to do so many complex things during a CTO PCI. Uh, so if I can get away with a single stint strategy, I normally do single stint strategy because the CTO PCI is a, a, a device uh, extensive procedure, so it's become really break the bank if you do all these things. Even in America, we have to think about that. So, uh, I would give one comment to that. I would actually go back to the original picture where you were able to see before the CT of PCI. In, if in that picture the diagonal looked good, then I would agree with Cal and would not do anything. If that original picture showed the diagonal was this is, I probably would 
that will make the Russian get out quicker. The original uh, di uh, on the retrograde injection, the diagonal was disease free. It didn't. It was had a angle the way you see it, but there was no disease. So there is a little plaque shift there. Uh, I mean, you may do a little balloon, or otherwise I would not put a stent if it was not disease to start with. My own feeling was I just ballooned off him with, with just plain protrusion, and then I just sent across it and see how it goes. Yeah, exactly. uh, and the jail, only thing I would add is, is I've gone to doing a lot of uh, jail uh, um, side balloon kissing technique uh, where, you know, if you use a 1.5 or 2 balloon here, you leave it underinflated at two atmospheres and stent across it and uh, try to avoid the, uh, um, the uh, flagship. I think the, this, this, this is a provisional stenting uh, part here. I, I wouldn't uh, do a... Um, um, uh, two stent um, uh, strategy to start with, um, but certainly if, if it dissects or something, that might be the thing to do later on. Uh, uh, sir, what maybe the, you can close the session and maybe later on we can bring back on to see the final result because that they are ready for the next session now. Okay, what we is do the diag and then stent across it with the 48. Uh, IS up size is 3.5, and we'll see how it goes. And then we're going to finish off that. Okay, so I'd like to thank Swale and his team. Uh, excellent work, uh, good for the patient. And I'd really like to thank all the panelists and speakers. I think it was an outstanding teaching session for and learning session for all of us. Thank you again, and we'll end the session here. Bye bye. Thank you. It was really nice having you guys. Right.